Welcome to Kiss Electrical. We are back today with another video that we're going to share with you on how to install an underground 200 amp service for um, a dwelling or a residential application. And we uh, subcontract out the digging portion of this. That way it kind of shifts the liability from hitting any type of other services in the ground like water or cable or something like that in that area shifts the liabilities to the diggers okay so we hired them they dug our hole we are installing this conduit um the it's got a sweeping two inch schedule 80 90 um it's three foot tall okay so it's a, a sweeping uh two inch uh, schedule 80 90 I know I just said that but I want you to be clear on uh, the the 90 it's got to be a sweeping and it's three foot tall okay from the ground up um, anything that uh, penetrates the ground has to be schedule 80 in our area and we have we just dig out just a little bit by the panel where the uh, contractors didn't get to um, I'm getting the ditch tape here. I kind of skipped a bunch of uh, little spots of me just walking around, getting material and stuff, laying it all out. Um, but I had to get a, um, a two inch, uh, male adapter to fit in this hole for the, the panel. And, uh, I just want to be sure that on those concentric knockouts that I knock out only what I need because if you knock out more, they have adapters that can reduce them, like reducing washers to fill the hole. But um, if you just do it right the first time, you won't have to buy that extra material. So anyway, uh, this is me knocking out the concentric knockout in the in the panel to uh, make room for the two inch male threaded adapter with the lock ring and a plastic bushing. Now, now this is the utility side that we're doing. So this is gonna be unbreakered. Um, but we're not installing this, the utility company is, but the contractor, uh, the home builder, uh, general contractor, however you wanna say it, they hired us to go ahead and run the conduit um, to the pole for the energy company to uh, pull the wire and terminate to the meter socket. Now, um, Slim was in the ditch and he just uh, took out just a little bit of dirt right there so we can bring the conduit up. So as I said, uh, the conduit that has to um, come out of the ground has to be Schedule 80. It's for protection of the conductors inside the conduit. Uh, we have to, I took my tape measure and put it through here so I can get an accurate measurement. Then I go over here and measure the Schedule 80 conduit. Um, put my thumb mark instead of putting a sharpie it's just easier uh, take my sawzall cut it break it over and then we'll clean out the edges make it nice and smooth nice straight cut and then we'll glue with pvc glue now it's not the same glue that plumbers use so be aware of it um, if you're going and getting any of this glue to connect this conduit together um, it's a little bit different type of glue. Uh, it makes an actual chemical bond with the PVC uh, to one another to help keep out contaminants out of the conduit. And we do our best our can uh, to keep out any dirt and debris and anything falling into the conduit while we uh, connect all the pieces. But uh, sometimes you just can't help it, especially when you're working in a three foot deep ditch. So we're putting all this in there. Like I said, we already got the male adapter in the uh, panel. So we're just gluing these Schedule 80 pieces uh, together right here. And then we're gonna put it into the panel. Now, mind you, um, I know there probably should be a strap on this, but the exterior of the the house is not complete. So once they do the siding and, and uh, get the exterior wall complete then we'll do our final strapping on this and uh, we just glue the piece up oh and another thing when you're doing the uh, schedule 80 it's always best to turn your conduit so the inspection 
uh, on the service or the inspector or authority having jurisdiction can see that the conduit is clearly labeled Schedule 80. So um, in your area, just be sure to kind of twist it a little bit or let the green label shine through. And uh, then that's just us. We, I did a little bit of editing on this because I didn't want y'all to have to see me just walking around getting stuff uh, here and there and putting all this pipe together. So it's really easy. You just, they got the bell ends. So we're just running right now to the service pole with the bell ends, gluing them together. And here I am with the, the other 90 closer to the pole for the service uh, drop for the utility company to, to um, push their wire down through. So it's just two 90s, just basically almost a straight shot to the house. So we got the 90 on there. We're making our measurements. We're gluing all this stuff together. I got the coupling. Uh, some of these 90s come with bell ends on them, but some of them don't. Um, if you do have to use the couplings on these, just be sure not to get it in a bind and um, have a lot of pressure on it where that coupling is not laying flat or something like that. Bell ends are a lot more stronger when it comes to PVC connections and couplings are a lot weaker. So if you can get the coupling to uh, not be in a bind with a lot of uh, force on it, pushing downward because a lot of times the ditch is not completely level, um, you can always add a little bit of dirt in there to kind of soften it and, and uh, cradle it and, and keep it from um, having a lot of pressure on it. But in, in our area right here, uh, this soil, this topsoil, is it's, you know, it's pretty good. It doesn't have like a lot of rocks in it, no slate rock, no gravel. It's just decent soil. Uh, it's kind of soft, easy to dig, uh, easy to drive ground rods. Um, as long as it's not, you know, compacted and dry, it, we're, we're pretty much uh, can get that in there relatively easy. Now, uh, I want you to know is when we go to glue this, in the summertime, this glue solidifies extremely fast, okay? And it becomes hard and it becomes very difficult for us to uh, twist the pipe in any kind of configuration or, you know, any direction that we need it to go. So we're having to uh, make sure that when we uh, put the glue on it, we are 100% ready to make the connection. And once we do that, the um the 90 i'll show you here in a second the 90 needs to be vertical or plumb you know um so he's making right now making the last cut for the coupling that, that needs to go back there uh and um we had to we chopped up a little stick there to uh and these are 10 foot sticks of schedule 40 that's in the ditch now anything in the ditch below the uh the ground uh can be schedule 40 but anything that comes out of the ground has to be schedule 80 for protection of the conductors like i already said now <clears throat> he's just making a connection on her and we are gonna glue it up and then i will reach down here and make sure that this conduit is coming up uh, vertically straight as possible um close to the pole now you have to check with your uh, local uh, uh, utility company and see how they prefer you um, uh, bring it up close to the pole some some of them like you right on the pole uh, we were told uh, roughly about six inches away from the pole i think they're going to do kind of like a standoff uh, from the pole uh, so they can strap it going vertical up the pole um, so, uh, our ditch was a little deeper right here than three foot, uh, toward the end of this pole. So, uh, we had to put an, an extra piece on there and we just had and use the rest of the conduit here. Um, and then we'll, the, we'll let the energy, um, uh, take it over from there. As you can see the green stripe on that schedule 80 and we're just gonna make sure it's straight, nice and, um, straight there. It's kind of heavy. So I went and got a shovel. And we're going to uh, shovel in a little bit of dirt at this time. You know, I'm just shoveling in dirt to keep the 90 from uh, moving. Um, kind of get it in place. 
Um, I know this at this point, y'all pretty much know how to move a little bit of dirt here and there, but give me just a second. Let me get this dirt in. I did try to edit a lot of this, like I said, walking around and, you know, getting this and that. Um, I'm not the best at editing, but um, I, I, I do try some so it won't waste your time. But anyway, um, I'm just putting the dirt in there and, and then Slim was going to kind of compact it down and make sure that it it doesn't move and then uh actually there was a mini excavator there on site and we were able to uh, get the key to it and um we we're able to backfill just a hair you know uh, it's typically their job but i wanted to be sure that the conduit was in fact um down just in case it rained because if you don't get something to hold that pipe down and it rains it will float so uh, to keep it from floating up to the top of the uh, ditch or, or whatever then you have to redo all this stuff that's going to be a pain in the butt so um we will take the excavator drop a little dirt down in there and uh, keep the pipes from uh, from coming up and then once we do that, oh, well, so now we're going to get this side. We got one side completed, and this side we're going to try to get this conduit plumb. Um, so he's taking the, the sharpshooter in there and kind of pulling it over so it looks straight and, and it's coming straight up into that um, panel. So it just looks like good, clean work like it's supposed to. And I'm going to drop some more dirt on this end to keep that conduit from moving or kicking out. Um, so we'll just wait here while we do that. Putting in more dirt. I know this is something that uh, you probably already know how to do, but I didn't edit this part out. We just left it so you can actually see exactly what it is we do as far as getting this installed. Uh, there's some, sometimes that... Uh, when people do how-to videos, they skip parts out, and that might be critical information that somebody may need to know um, because they just do it all the time, so they don't think about somebody that's never done it before. Um, and, but in this aspect, I just wanted you to see the exact steps that we're doing here. Some of it I did um, cut out, like like I said, my walking around, but uh, I don't think you need to know how to walk around, I'm sure. You'll be just fine. So anyway, I'm putting this dirt in there, and you can see Slim packing that stuff in there to keep that pipe from moving. And we're just pushing this easy dirt in there. It's not real heavy. It's not real wet, and it's not muddy. It's not gravelly. It's just good old dirt, good old Arkansas dirt. But there are some areas in Arkansas that's mountainous and rocky and it's so much, much more difficult to dig. So at this point, we're going to drive our ground rod in. Since we got the 90 and the, and the pipe going into the, the panel, we're going to drive the ground rod in. Um, according to code, you can drive the ground rod in at a 45, or you can lay it at horizontally, but it has to be at least two foot deep. Uh, we're going to just draw, draw, drive it in vertically. Um, you know, I used to do it by hand with a sledgehammer, and, and then... I said, man, I'm getting too old for this crap. So I bought me a, a nice Hilti, uh, 30 pound. And then I got the adapter for the um, ground rod and it just drives it in there for us. As long as you got a little bit of power somewhere or we take our generator with us, we just hook it up and it, man, saves so much time, so much back work. You know, it's just uh, great. So that ground rod we had in there was an eight foot by five eighths copper clad ground rod. And we drove it in, and it needs to be just a couple of inches below grade. That way, when we make the connection 
to the ground rod here in a little bit. I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. But since now that we have the conduit completely connected all the way through in our local area, uh, the ener energy providing uh, company, the utility company, ask us to pull a pull string through here. So this is me pushing the fish tape in uh, from one uh, opening to the other opening all the way across that property. And then uh, slim one to the other end tied on uh, a string. And then here's me pulling the fish tape and rolling it back up so we can, I think this thing was about 80, 80 or 90 foot long. So it wasn't too terrible. And like I said, it had two sweeping 90, so it was pretty easy, you know. So um, we're pulling the fish string back out of it, and then we'll tie it off on both ends. That way it doesn't go down into the pipe, and then they say we didn't do it. So uh, he'll cut it on the other end and tie it around the pole and secure it, and then also put tape over the top of the, the conduit that is going vertical up the pole. So... Uh, objects don't fall in there or you know um, it doesn't clog it because you need to have a, um, a pathway uh, really easily um, so you can you know get the conduit or get the uh, wire in it so we just want to keep it clean from debris or anything falling in there now that we got that done I'll um, work on finishing the ground uh, ground grounding conductor uh, and this is, uh, we drilled a little quarter inch hole in the bottom of that panel. And you saw me, I put, uh, this is solid wire. Now I know on the new 2020 code, it says uh, for us to use uh, schedule 80 uh, conduit into the ground to protect this conductor. However, in our local municipality, they allow us to um, run um, a solid copper number four right to the ground rod without any uh, schedule 80 conduit so that's the local uh, authority having jurisdiction allowing us to do that and as you can see what i did with that that wire i put a little hook on it and have have it going into the ground and then back up um uh running parallel along the side of that grounding uh that ground rod and then i put that what i call like a teardrop but it's just like just a little um clamp grounding clamp and it's and uh you just put it in there and then tighten up this ground uh, clamp around the ground rod and the wire and then i take my electrician's hammer and bend the wire down around it so uh, it makes a good bond and it keeps it from having to uh, people kicking it out now at this point we are gonna we we already backfilled with that mini x so we backfilled that uh about halfway and then when you backfill it about halfway at this point some contractors do this but i used to work for a utility company so it's kind of engraved and instilled in in me um it's the best way to notify. I don't know about your area, but my area, this is the way we do it. Um, we will take this ditch tape and run uh, the length of the ditch right above our conduit. Uh, so let's just say that the ditch is three, in, three foot uh, deep. Our conduit is at the bottom of that. And then we put in, I don't know, roughly about a foot to 18 inches of topsoil on top of that. And then we will take our ditch tape and lay over the top of uh, that little bit of topsoil. So if somebody else comes in there and starts to dig, they will see the um, ditch tape warning them that there is electrical lines buried below that. So it's nice and clean, and now we're flagging it back off for the, uh, um, the excavator team to come back in and... Uh, clean up the job and then we'll put a little bit of dirt on top of the um slim's putting a little dirt on top of the dish tape so it doesn't blow out of there while we're waiting on the excavator team to come back and, and finish and uh that's it thanks for watching